large extent, and one which is quite later satisfies this model to a large extent, even more than the NCC, because NCC is restricted to telecommunications. And of course, we are clearly agree that traffic is beyond telecommunication, even though it has some, um, some impact on telecommunications and use of telecommunications. So we can have that complaint that protection law that will take care of all the rules, that will establish all the rules of engagement, you know, transparency, the rights, protecting data, and all of that, and hold the to the highest level of accountability and integrity for the data, you know, stored, used, acquired within that framework, within that, uh, within, within the cloud. So when we have that, then we can say we were in it. I don't think we need that law. We are completely fine to some extent. I can think, I can say that NIDA is in point. It's a progressive development. NIDA is well established by law, and it's an ICT regulator beyond NCC, but then the NIDA Act itself falls short for an adequate and effective legal framework. So, if you look at Section 6 of NIDA, it covers cloud computing, which is the main provisions that sets out the powers of NIDA as a regulatory institution. But NIDA does not have a regulatory power or enforcement power. It cannot enforce anything. So, I believe that short of having a comprehensive data protection law, which I think is in view, I haven't seen it, but I think is in view, we can actually amend or strengthen NIDA infrastructure or framework to take care of cloud computing specifically and use NIDA that has the, the powers to even issue directives and to issue guidelines and regulations to have a cloud specific or cloud enabling regulation within that framework in, that will take care of cloud computing. So, the, the step, in terms of data framework, what we have, apart from all the, all the technologies being used here, big, inventory, ineffective, I think NIDA represents an inchoate legal framework towards having a more effective legal framework for regulating uh, cloud computing, particularly from the narrow perspective of data privacy and security. So, the matter of this Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Prof. Prof. Yes, we need a comprehensive framework, but with sector-specific provisions. However, I would advise that while we are pursuing that, we should be careful so that, because what, what is best practice nowadays is a hybrid of statutory regulation and market forces regulation. Because where you have two stringent legal regulations, then you still full market forces and competition. Therefore, I would recommend a hybrid of both statutory regulation and market forces regulation. Then as for the um, private law aspect of the relationship between maybe service provider and um, service user, I think that the legal framework, especially regulation that are made pursuant to whatever is the principal act, can also give some leverage or leeway to contractual terms that may be agreeable between the parties as at the time of entry into um, a, a relationship so that they can determine what the nature of their relationship will be, not just uh, um, essentially um, strictly regulated by law. Parties should have the, the freedom to look at the contractual terms and agree or disagree so that to an extent agreements can take care of that a private law or private relationship concern. Thank you. That is who, who are we trying to protect our data from? Right? Um, I think that yes, we don't have adequate privacy laws and we need adequate privacy laws. If you look at countries, I mean, Ghana has just put in a data privacy uh, act, Angola has a data privacy act. There's no reason why Nigeria shouldn't have one. Um, so I think that yes, for the general protection of personal data, whether the data is stored in the cloud or is stored physically, we do need a, a, a very good and comprehensive data privacy legislation. But when, now which brings me to the second part of my questions around, you know, who are, we, who are we trying to protect or stop from accessing that data? Um, and one of the things that I think that we lack in Nigeria is a strong judicial framework. Because the point of it is that whether your data is sitting down in a server or a PC in your office, or is sitting down in the cloud, it should be protected. Um, and I think I was reading that an article, was it earlier on in the week, week about uh, security operatives going into the ABC data center and cutting away data. Now, 
it seems that what we are asking here, and, and I may be wrong, but the conversation seems to be around protecting data sitting in the cloud, and maybe some, somehow affording data sitting in the cloud more protection than you have data sitting physically. And we have to be able to look at data protection holistically. Whether it's sitting in the cloud or sitting in a server in somebody's office, we should be able to say, okay, there are certain steps or certain formalities that need to be gone through if you want access to my data. I should be able to say, you know what, I'm taking out an injunction against you, whether my data is in the cloud or my data is sitting down in my office. And I think once we strengthen the judiciary to even understand the fundamentals and the, of data privacy, even within our existing legal framework, yes, it's, it's, it's inadequate, but even as inadequate as it is, we are not enforcing what we have. So I think we need to first start with enforcing what we have. Now, when you talk about data protection, we need to be very careful because and, and access, because we're talking about multi-jurisdictional issues here. So if I, it's, it's easier if your data is sitting in a server in Abuja, and you can say, okay, the provider is sitting in Abuja. What happens when your data is sitting in another country? Who has jurisdiction over your data? Where does the control sit? And that's where, you know, we, as, as much as we have, people have a fear, or I see a general fear of the public around, oh, data, data, data. A lot of us are already in the cloud with Hotmail, Gmail, the services that we use every day. And it's a, it's a, it's a two-pronged, it's a double-edged sword in that we have developers today, very good developers today, who are selling their services.